Why is the Hiromi Gen 6 documentation only available for patrons, which means it's not free anymore? We discussed this in a recent interview on this channel with Andy Mediaman 3 d Soderberg, the creator of the Hiromi Master Suite. This is part of a bigger playlist, which I've also linked down in the description. In those videos, we talk about how the Hiromi Suite came to life, what's new with Hiromi Gen 6, the new part cooling ducts, design principles and compromises, as well as the new monetization of the documentation for Patreon, and finally, the future of Hiromi, what new things are coming. So let's jump right into the interview to see why Andy made the decision to make the Hiromi Gen 6 and future documentation available to his patrons only. Andrew, um, there is a little controversial topic that I want to bring up. Um, you probably know what I mean. Um, with Hiromi Gen 6, you made a decision that the documentation is available only for patrons. What drove you to the decision to, uh, to do that now? Right. Well, um, looking back, I wish I had done it a year ago, uh, but uh, you know, you make choices when you make choices. Mm. The, the thing is, I, I've literally put thousands of hours into this, uh, not getting paid, uh, in designing it. I've spent mm -hmm. hundreds of hours over the last years answering literally three, four plus thousand questions. I, I just, I, you know, I can't, I can't keep that up and pay for the mortgage and, you know, all the other things. So, you know, I, I needed to find a way that my value add is is worthwhile, is worth something. If you think about it, if you worked somewhere and I came to you and said, you know, I want you to do this for me and I'm not going to pay it, right? So I, I buy the milk you make if you're a milkman, but I want you to go milk my cows and, and you want to get paid for that, right? So yeah. that's what's really going on here is is the Hero Me is open source. The Hero Me uh, Gen 5, Gen 6, uh, Gen 7 will always be open source. but uh, my knowledge uh, and my support and my documentation, I think, is worth something. And so Absolutely. in January of uh, this year, January 10th, I set up Patreon. I moved 52-page parts cross-reference and uh, assembly guide uh, behind the patron wall. I think I've had, I'm sure there are people on the internet in forums who've said, oh, gee, now that you got to spend some money, I won't, I won't never do that. Uh, it's all, I'm all open source for free forever. Great. I, I, I respect their decisions. But mm. uh, surprisingly, uh, there's been a lot of uh, people. Uh, I've now got nearly 1,500 patrons uh, in just That's 10 amazing. 11 weeks. And you can get the documentation for as little as $2. You don't have to subscribe forever. You can subscribe for a day. You get the rest of the month anyway. Get the documentation and go away for just 2 bucks. But you know, I also have other tiers above that I offer additional services, additional support, and I'm, and I'm doing some things that are exclusive. So for example, mm -hmm. a big, huge upgrade to Gen 6 right now is exclusive to my patrons for the month of April. Come May 1st, it'll all get published to Thingiverse and all the other you know popular uh, uh, STL libraries, Cults 3D, uh, Prusa Printers, Thangs, you know, uh, et cetera. The other thing is that the Hero Me that's published, I've updated the file names so that you can interpret what the part is and mm -hmm. it's not hard if you've got the ability to preview like whether it be in your slicer or whatever to preview the stls and look at the file name it can you can determine what you need you know you have this you know uh, a v6 so you want one that's the e3d v6 in the file name you know you've got a 50 15 fan well then you mm -hmm. want a part that's got 50 15 in the file name etc so the file names are are, are pretty straightforward that people can do it on their own if they want to do it on their own. Yeah, I guess people can figure it out. If they have some experience, um, they probably can figure it out themselves. I, I think I mentioned that in the video. I also think that like in general, having a paywall sounds in the first place, it sounds bad, but it's actually uh, for the creator. It's something essential that uh, he gets paid. I think that's a total valid point. Yeah, and I've got a uh, I've got a Discord absolutely. server set up now, and I've got several hundred of my patrons that are on the Discord server. Yeah, and that's been really collaborative. I'm I'm communicating with them almost daily, and of course, my patrons who are not on Discord, I handle the messages that that come in to the Patreon interface. Um, and so yeah, it's it's working out for me. And it's working out for my patrons, and I, I get it. Somebody doesn't like that idea, uh, want to go elsewhere, I, I respect their choices. If people decide to take the documentation from Hear Me Gen 6 and like post it somewhere on the internet, it doesn't really make sense. Like 
there, there's probably going to be, be out of date. So yeah, there, there yeah. have been um, about eight or nine places that when I did the Gen 6 and I took mm -hmm. the docs down, that people had posted the PDF or actually embedded the content into a web page. And so I did do DCMA takedowns uh, on them. And I think six out of eight took them down. There's always going to be the people. And I think the point of, of having Patreon is not to prohibit but it's more like you you support the creator because you value what he's doing. So um, yeah, I've, and I've actually had uh, a number of patron, and in fact, even non-patron supporters who have built their their Hero Me Gen Five or Gen Six come to my defense on uh, a Thingiverse when people say, "Oh, it's behind a paywall." They've actually, without me having to go say it, they say, "Hey, you know, two bucks, you know, come on, it's worth it," and you get all this documentation. Uh, and you, you know, can ask questions and, and get support from the community. In fact, Thomas in Germany, you know, Thomas, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, sure. Uh, and, and his whole open source tirade versus patents, right? You remember that one? Yeah, I think so he, he built a CNC he, machine and then they, they forced him to like not yeah, publish it, it or yeah, publish the video or something. He's, he, he actually, he, he, he did this video very much a rant on, on patents and how they were bad for, for mm -hmm. innovation. And he, the community uh, straightened him out. And he did another video later. Goes, okay, I see the value of patents, and where you know it's not about preventing or locking things down. It's about being able to afford to do new design. That I got to have a, be able a way to make money off of my work and not having me ripped off by the Chinese or someone else, right? Yeah. And, and yeah. so it's a way of protecting you know my stuff, but it doesn't mean it can't get used. I will license it. I want my stuff to be used. And so, um, yeah, there, there are reasons for open source, but there's also reasons, valid, valid reasons for commercial or patron where, you know, it's, do you see the value of the value add of what I'm doing in my documentation and my knowledge, et cetera. And again, that's, that's where I draw the line is, mm -hmm. is, you know, this will all, these will be open source, but if you want me to answer questions at three in the morning or whatever, then come on, be a subscriber on Patreon. <laughs> that makes sense. Oh, it's just me. I just have one question and it's never one question. Yeah, yeah, sure. But they don't get that there's this wide, wide world out there. Uh, yeah. And yeah, over the last four years, it's easily been three or 4,000 questions. All of the previous generations are still on Thingiverse mm -hmm. deprecated. So you can find them and the files are all there, but yeah, it's kind of frozen in time. Yeah. Um, I mean, the same when I'm doing a video, let's say, uh, I think I planned for some video where I would say, okay, I have this Ender 3. That's what the, that's the part that I'm using. That's not to offend you as the creator of uh, a patron. Actually, I mentioned it much of the time. So I would say, I um, support this creator because his work is great. And we are just doing an example here, but we're never disclosing the documentation or not, neither going to be making it available for download. So the, the intention is to make people aware of how the process works, how to select parts and how easy it is. Right. Yeah. So yeah. it's more, I think it's on the positive side, even though there is kind of a partial disclosure of like, okay, this printer requires X, Y, Z part. I think that's kind of obvious, but the, 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 the intention of the patron is, as you said, it is not to hinder you from building your printer. It's, it's, it's about, uh, appreciation and support. The only thing that I would say like about paying once $2, I think it's, uh, like in the long term, it's probably making sense to stay patron because you can get updates, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, because if you, if you, that, like, let's say you had become a patron four weeks ago, or that, I don't know when, when it was exactly released, but when, when you like hit the first version of, uh, Hero Me Gen 6, I saw the documentation and I was uh, looking into it and I said, okay, that there is things not updated yet. There is th things mentioning parts that are obviously still Hero Me Gen so 5. That's, There's that's pictures. That's what I'm finishing today is yeah. the updated doc. So, so the, the, the Gen 6 that I sent you and that's posted mm -hmm. uh, on Patreon is all the new files. In fact, last night, someone told me that Sherpa came out with their new micro. So there's a Sherpa Mini, now there's a Sherpa Micro. Well, last night I made the uh, uh, Hero Me bases for the whole positions for the Sherpa Micro. So that that got added at the last minute. Uh, but I'm, yeah, with over 300 parts, I'm still editing this document. That was part six of my interview series with Andy Soderberg about the Hero Me Suite. In the final part, which I linked here for you, 
We are talking about the future of Hiromi, some very interesting things to come and how you can test them out very soon. Thanks for watching and I see you in the next video.